Oh hi there, I am Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time you're passing through, you know the drill. You can like, you can subscribe, you can share, and you can also press the thumbs down button if you don't agree with what I say. Most of my information is based on um, news releases, um, information I come across, and um, yeah, emails that people send me. Um, the let me see. The source of the video today was based on a conversation I had with a friend of mine who's a social worker. And I was so shocked to find out that adult social care supports people to repatriate with dignity. Now, a lot of people who are undocumented, they may not want to go back. They probably think, oh, they have been in the country for so long, they don't want to go back. There's nothing back there for them. But I, I'm kind of thinking to myself, knowing what I know about the detention centres, the um, vendetta to get all the undocumented um, migrants out of the country, I'm trying to think about how can we, well, when I say we, the undocumented people, leave the country with dignity. I don't know how many of you saw that gentleman who left, he was deported with just the clothes on his back. No money, nothing. And some charity put him in some kind of shed. I don't think he had any family, nothing. So what I'm thinking is to be proactive. There's certain people who this information may not apply to, but for others who are undocumented, who have no money, who are struggling, it's good to know that social care can give you money. I'll tell you how much there is later. They can ask you, actually ask you to meet them at the airport or you or they can escort you at least you're not being chained the, a, a social worker will escort you to the airport there'll be a ticket and cash money at the airport and you can leave in dignity you also have the privilege of staying with your family until that point as opposed to being picked up stuck in a detention center and being treated like crap. And to make it worse, Serco has been awarded 200 million to take over Brookhouse and Tinsley House. Coldbrook, I think, is still governed by Mighty. But Serco has a history of sexual abuse of the detainees, cruelty. I don't know how many of you saw that panorama on BBC in, two, I think it was September 2017, where they were humiliating, abusing, taunting the detainees, assaulting them. So you don't want that. And you don't want to be looking over your shoulder every five minutes, just not knowing when they're going to pick you up because they are on a vendetta to find undocumented. And yes, you are supposed to be removed, but they deport. Undocumented people are meant to be removed, but they deport and all of those, the stigma and everything associated with deportation goes with it. Now, we mustn't get confused with the voluntary deportation that is done through the Home Office. Now, when I was looking for the information that my, my friend or colleague told me last night, I started searching online to see where can I find this information. I couldn't find it anywhere. I came across the Home Office website for um, voluntary deportation. And it did say something about financial assistance, but goodness knows what you have to do to do that. But as soon as I, I was going to go through the process to see um, what it was like to apply for voluntary deportation. But as soon as I saw that it was linked to the Home Office, and we all know that there's institutional racism in the post office, I just stopped and I thought, no, I'm not going to go through this. It's sad that we cannot have trust 
in a system that is meant to assist and support, but based on the information we receive, we can't trust them. And that is a shame. So I decided to call my colleague and say to her, look, I cannot find anything online about what you told me. And she said, it's not widely spoken about. It's not widely known. So I said to her, so is there any criteria? You know, can somebody who's undocumented and has no money just turn up at adult social services, be given a ticket to the airport, given be given a ticket to um, their home country, one way ticket and 3000 quid? Can they just do that? And she said, yes. But the um, social care have the power to repatriate. Now, you need to know that that is what you want to do. There's, um, you know, they'll escort you to the airport or they'll ask you to meet you there. And, you know, you wait until you um, get there before you get the ticket. And you, it's not like you get it in advance. Um, the money, um, you get that in cash. So it is a support system for undocumented immigrants or migrants and it's good to know that that is available not that you need to have any kids you don't need to be of a certain age you don't need to have mental illness this is a service they provide now when you think what the government government is doing to make your life miserable I prefer personally to leave with dignity and have a little money rather than be shipped out on their time scale and not have anything. So what is the government doing um, about stopping undocumented migrants from having their basic needs met in the UK? They're unable to live a normal life. OK, their bank account. They can't open a bank account. If they try to open a bank account and the, the bank finds out that they haven't got no legal status, immediately the bank reports that to the Home Office. Even if you go to social care, they'll still check your status, but it's not as if. So don't go there lying if you're going to try and get to, um, if you want to be repatriated. I'll call it repatriated because it's a totally different process to being deported. They'll still check your status. So don't go there lying. They're there to help you not drain resources on the UK. So they are willing to pay for your ticket, pay for your taxi to get to the airport and give you some money. So you've got something to start off with. So whatever you do, don't lie because it would just spoil your chances. OK, so. Um, Driving a car, the DVLA will stop driving license, so you won't be able to drive if you're not documented. Um, renting a home, you know how difficult that is without paperwork. Getting a job, that's practically impossible without paperwork, unless you know somebody who's willing to take that risk. Getting health care, that's practically impossible unless it's an emergency. And um, getting money, um, you know, with recourse to public funds. If you've got no recourse to public funds, social care will still help you to repatriate. You just need to know that you want to go back. You've had enough. You, you're not quite sure what you're going to do. You can't survive in this country anymore. So they'll assist you to do that. And I, I was quite happy with that news. Happy only because I prefer people to be repatriated with something, something, a little money, so that at least they can get a few tools and they can sort themselves out and they're not an immediate burden on their families. I prefer to know that than to have people on that deportation flight stuck in detention months upon end being treated like crap, then stuck chained on a, on a charter flight, chained and shackled on a charter flight and then deposited in the country that they were from that they do not know anything about. At least when you go to the social care, you can do it on your timetable, but I would do it sooner rather than later. Um, you could do it on your timetable and organise yourself a bit better. So that's why I feel a bit better about it. I, am, I appreciate that a lot of people who are undocumented, they do not want to go back. I appreciate that, 
but it is good to know that there are options and sometimes all we need to know is that there are options. Um, so the government are also asking doctors, nurses, banks, landlords, employers to check all documents. Now I employed an accountant yesterday because I'm doing these YouTube videos and when you start getting a little something something in, you need to be able to um, sort out the accounts and I'm absolutely useless at that. It's not even that I'm useless at it, I'm pretty good at it. But now the um, HMRC, you have to have a certain software and it's, it's a, I don't know how you pay for the software, how you get it installed, but you need this software and it's a particular software that interacts with HMRC and goodness knows who else. And I really haven't got the time or the energy to get that software installed on my laptop and do all of that, even though I'm not getting much on the um, YouTube videos, but it still needs to be accounted for. But when I went there, the, is similar, you need your um, driving license, and she kept on saying, what about your passport? Even though they just said you need your driving license and you need your um, two um, ID, like bills or bank statements. But, you know, I said, you know, you've got my driving license. And then when she saw I had bank statements, that was enough. But I think the reason why they want passports is to see if you're legitimate in the country. She could have insisted. I think she probably, may, probably knew, I don't know. If I had an accent, they probably would have insisted that I had a passport. But because I'm obviously British, they didn't insist. But they did ask for the driving license um, and two forms of ID, like my council tax bill and what have you, a bank account. So I'm just saying that, you know, if you're not legal in the country, it's practically impossible to do anything. So therefore, would you prefer to leave the country with dignity and a few, a few um, shekels in your pocket? That's basically what I'm saying. Um, the Home Office will also get information from other organisations to ascertain where you are. And I assume that is like the local bar council. And apart from um, the bank accounts and all those other things, they're probably in touch with the local bar council. What other government institutions are there? Well, I think the council is the main one because they've got NHS, they've got the healthcare, they've got the banks, they've got the DVLA. And those are the main institutions, aren't they, really? So on the, on the 30th of October 2017, banks and building societies had to do an immigration check and report to the Home Office any dodgy applicants. Accounts were then frozen or closed with your money in it. Now, supposing you had opened up a bank account, you know, when you were ages ago before this came into force, say prior to the hostile environment policy, then any money, and then subsequently they're asking you to do immigrant checks, although they haven't asked me to do an immigrant check. I don't know how they do it. But anyway, and then subsequently they find out that you're undocumented in the country. They can close your account without you know, with um, your money in it. They can, and you can actually lose it because as far as they're concerned, you're not legally entitled to be banking. Um, so, and if they've made a mistake, all well and good, you know, like some people, they say, oh, um, because the papers didn't look right, but they're actually right, and they've made a mistake. They're saying, oh, well, you can go and get legal advice. Legal advice costs money. And, you know, they're talking to people who are already vulnerable, who don't have, you know, fluid cash to pay out legal advisors. And so it's like you're, you're, you're doomed to fail. If everything is legal advice, legal advice, legal advice, unless you've got some insurance, and then how do you get insurance? I don't know. Do you need, um, do you need to show ID to get insurance? Maybe not initially, you might not need it, but then I bet you if they have to pay out, then they're going to ask you for all the ID possible. And if they find out you're undocumented, you're not going to pay out, they're not going to pay out. 
So that's a waste of time. What else is there? Um, so different councils have different policies. That's the first thing. So whereas one um, policy, one um, social care office might give you 3,000, say for example, another might give you two. So I think um, from what she was saying, they all do things differently, but all of them have the capacity to repatriate. So that's the, that is um, one of the things that they are able to do. So they might do it differently, but they all have the capacity to do that. Um, what else? Um, taxi to the airport. And this is where the dignity comes in. You get a taxi to the airport. You're not in one of these, you're not in a van strapped and shackled. You can stay where you are until um, social care have told you that they've got your ticket and the money is ready and they give you the date and the time of your flight. You can either go with them or you can go there by yourself and meet them there. This is what I call dignity. Um, you've got a polite and a discreet escort to the um, airport. My colleague happens to be very attractive. She's a social worker. And um, I, you know, I know anybody would be um, quite happy to be escorted to the airport with somebody like her. And then you get your £3,000 and your one-way one ticket. They can't help you with housing if you're here legally. They can't help you with legal papers. So it's no point asking them to help you with anything to help you stay in the country. Their sole purpose is to repatri repatriate you so that you can have a little dignity and you can have a little start. Um, some people, if they've got cancer treat, if they're having cancer treatment in the country, if you can get it for at the country where you're destined for, then that's no excuse to stay. But there are certain cancers where only three countries, I think, it's USA, Germany and the UK can provide treatment and then you are allowed to stay until that treatment is finished and then you'll be deported. Um, so what else is there? The home office, like I said, the home office do have a voluntary return system and when you go to the social care they will ask you if you want to go personally to the home office and have voluntary deportation because they are um, they are to suggest that. But you will need to say, um, where did I write that down? I'm seeking support from social services to repatriate me to my home country. So you don't want to go to the home office. You don't want their voluntary repatriation. I don't trust it anyway. Sorry to say that. That's just my opinion. But for me, I think if you're going to be voluntarily repatriated, there's no guarantee you're going to be repatriated with dignity. That's why I'm saying I don't trust them. I don't trust them to repatriate you with dignity as opposed to repatriating with dignity. That's my only concern, just because of all what we hear. We hear, we hear nightmares about what our detainees go through. And then I'd hate to kind of do a video and say to um, anybody who's undocumented um, to go and voluntary, um, go through the home office for voluntary repatriation. And then they're flung in a detention center and they're brutalized and stigmatized and, you know, insulted and humiliated when when I can suggest that they that they try the home office not the home office social care and social care they will tell the home office what they've done that they've they're repatriating you and they're giving you money so they do liaise with them it's not like a separate entity but it just means that you get to leave with dignity and if my so if my colleague hadn't told me her experience I wouldn't trust anybody else to tell me that information but she is one of those who've actually escorted um detainees well not detainees 
has actually um, escorted um, people who have approached the social care for support to repatriate. And she's actually been in the taxi with them, taken them to the airport, um, showed them where they get their ticket and their money, made sure they've got on the plane. And I didn't even realise that was a part of her job. I thought how satisfying it must be to know that you're sending somebody off with a little bit of dignity. Yes, we've all made mistakes and we do not know why people are undocumented. But to think that there is an out where you can leave with a little dignity, I think that is fantastic news. So, um... The action is, if you're interested, you go to adult social housing. Uh, you tell them that you would like them to assist you in repatriating you to your country. Um, and they should tell you, like I said, they will suggest that you go to home office, but you'll say you, can, you want them to support you. Because it's not something that's widely advertised. They're not going to say, oh, yeah, we're going to send you off. They're not going to do that. They're not going to widely advertise and say, oh, yeah, we're going to send you off and you're going to get 3,000, blah, blah, blah. Because it's not like you're just doing it for the money or whatever. You have to have a genuine um, desire to return back. And, you know, not just look at it as you being able to get money from social care. But it is an incentive. That's all I'm saying. It's an incentive. So you explain your circumstances, you've undocumented whichever way, and you, uh, whether you've, or not you've got nowhere to live, no recourse to public funds, blah, blah, blah. And then social services will support your repatriation. Um, they will ask you if you want to go to the Home Office yourself and accept their voluntary deportation, and like I said, um, there's no guarantee that you'll be repatriated or returned with dignity. Um, and like I said, you'll need to say I'm seeking support from social services to repatriate me to my home country. And then after everything is done, then they'll probably say how much the fee is they're going to give you to help you reintegrate. Okay. So you don't have to go in there saying, oh, I heard you're going to give me this. I heard you're going to give me that amount of money. You just do what you need to do. Um, so I think I've covered everything. The money that they give you will be in your own currency. If it's not, you get the opportunity to change it. And why they do this is because they don't want you. If you stay, you're a burden to the country. And so this is a way of... Um, unburdening the country um don't want to yeah so for me i think before they catch you and they deport you like a criminal or like an animal i'd much prefer you to take this route if you can and i think that's all for now bye bye